Well, my friends, welcome to Summit. This week we're talking about the Most Holy Trinity because that's the solemnity this Sunday. I said last week after Pentecost, we still got a couple more big solemnities, big feast days coming up after the Easter season ends. This is one of two. But I also know that right now, summer is probably in full swing. What are you doing this summer? What are your big plans? You going on vacation somewhere? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know what you're doing that's fun this summer. I'm going to be traveling to a couple of youth conferences. Hopefully, I'll see you at one of them, East West and Steubenville, St. Paul. So if you're going to one of those, let me know in the comments as well. Okay, let's jump into this. I got to get, I got a confession to make. My kids are going to hate this confession. I hate the board game Clue. I hate it. My kids love it. We got like a Clue Junior, which is even, if you can imagine, worse than actual Clue. And if you're a big Clue fan, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not into it. Like sitting around, making guesses, going to all those different rooms is a terrible board game. And probably the reason why I'm not a big fan of Clues, I'm, I'm not a big fan of mystery, like, period. Uh, I've said this before. I read the end of fiction novels right away. I just need to know where it's going. I don't like to be surprised. I read spoilers for movies. Some people say that makes me a monster. I say that just makes me a guy who likes, no, there's enough mystery in my life that I don't need to introduce any more of that into my world. I just don't. I think for all of us, we feel a little bit of that in different ways though, right? Maybe you like mysteries and you like suspense and you're into that, but there's other things we don't really enjoy when it comes to mystery. We don't like not knowing. In a world where we can understand so much and we can access so much and we can answer so many questions, it's frustrating, right? When there are things that we just can't answer fully. We're uncomfortable with the idea of true mystery, a mystery that is involves something important that we really want to know, that we need to know, and yet just seems out of reach. I think this is the reason why so many of us sometimes get frustrated or struggle in our faith life. Because faith, right, is a mystery. And we compare our faith as a mystery to how we deal with other mysteries, as puzzles to be solved, as challenges to figure out solutions to, as things that maybe if we find the right proof or we find the right equation, we can figure it all out. Like a clue game, right? If you collect all of the right pieces, you'll get the answer when it comes to our faith. When we talk about faith as a mystery, though, it's not that type of mystery. And that's what today is all about. Today is about entering into this great mystery of who God is. And all the readings that we'll get reflect this Trinitarian mystery, that God is a communion of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that these three persons are in perfect unity. They're distinct, but these three persons are not separate. That each person of the Trinity is involved in this eternal exchange of love. In the first reading, we hear about wisdom or the Holy Spirit as this eternal, uncreated reality. Not a reality, even, but a person. As we move forward into the gospel, Jesus is talking about the relationship he shares with God the Father and that everything that God has, the Father has, is his. And, and he wants to take that and make it known to the disciples. But then there's this line at the very beginning, but you cannot bear it now. And I think about that line and I reflect on it because I'm like, what does Jesus mean? Does he mean like, you can't bear this now ahead of the crucifixion? Maybe. Maybe. But maybe there's something more uh, broad about it, right? Maybe it's your mortal brain, your mortality cannot bear the weight of this mystery now. And I think that rings true with the Trinity. You see, when we talk about God, yes, God is a mystery because God is infinite. God is beyond our understanding. God is beyond all concepts of our mortal limits. And yet God invites us into the mystery. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is this book that contains the most important teachings of the church. It's a really wonderful, uh, wonderful book to read through. It's a great reference book to have. But in it, as it talks about the Trinity, this is how it talks about the Trinity. It says that through the Trinity, God has revealed his innermost secret. That God has revealed his mystery and God invites us into it. God asks us to step forward into this relationship, not to try to solve or to figure it out because right now we can't bear it. It's just beyond our comprehension, but we can enter into that mystery the same way we enter into the mystery of love. And really, that's at the core of who the Trinity is, who God is. And that's what we celebrate today, that God has revealed this secret of this relationship of love, that God the Father loves God the Son for all of eternity and that this love begets 
a third person that is also eternal, co-eternal, the Holy Spirit. And that when we enter into a relationship with Jesus, by virtue of doing that, we enter into a relationship with the Holy Spirit and a relationship with God the Father. And now we're part of this relationship of love, a relationship that is a mystery. But why does that matter to you? Why does that matter to me? Because when we enter into this relationship of love, suddenly our perspective changes. This is the perspective that St. Paul is giving us in the second reading. He's encouraging people as they move through moments of affliction or suffering to have hope. And the only way we can really do that is if we're standing firm in the reality of love. Because this mystery of God that we can't bear fully right now, one day we will when we enter into that relationship in heaven. Recently I read um, this analogy for heaven from uh, Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen. It was an archbishop many years ago. And he compares the idea of heaven with, um, with, with being thirsty. And he talks about how, you know, if we were to never experience thirst, a desire for water, that, that wouldn't be human. But if we, if we only ever had thirst, like that would be, that'd be hell, that'd be insufferable to never, to never be able to have water. But to enter into this relationship of love, to enter into this eternal heaven is to experience at once being thirsty and then being satisfied. Imagine that. Like imagine the, the feeling you get on a day that is just oppressively hot and you just need a drink of water. That experience of that first sip of cold water. That moment where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting what I need. Imagine living in that moment forever. That's a mystery. And that's the mystery of the love of the Trinity. And that's the mystery you and I are invited into today. It's a mystery that allows us to endure the other great mysteries of life, of suffering, of faith, of what love is as we experience with one another and as we experience with God and what it means to continually grow in understanding. So this day, as we celebrate the most holy Trinity, God revealing his innermost secret, take this to heart, that this is not a mystery to be solved. It's not a board game to figure out. It's not something that we get to the end and we, we know everything at a certain point. It's something we grow in as we grow in relationship with our Lord and continuing to understand. And as we understand, we realize the mystery goes deeper. And one day when we enter into that eternal beatitude that is heaven, that eternal grace and glory, the mystery becomes revealed as we become it. That's the most holy trinity. As we enter into this week, the first of two special solemnities, post-Easter solemnities we have as we keep our summer rolling. And I will see you back here for number two, Body and blood of Jesus Christ, next week on Summit.